Thanks to the supporters of Channel Member A11 Scorpio 1996. Oh, boys and girls, I have a theory and it goes a little like this. I don't think we're rubbish anymore. And today we're going to test a theory because we're playing against arguably two of the best teams in the division. Welcome to part 10 of Wembley to Wembley. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two big games for you. First up, a triple threat match against Edgware and Kingsbury. And then we play Rainers Lane, strong favourites to run away with the league this season. Since you were last with me, we've been doing really rather well. As you can see, we've won more games than we lost, which is a lovely little bit of uh, variation from last season. Unfortunately, we did get knocked out of the FA Cup in the preliminary round against Chipstead. This is Chipstead off of the Isthmian League Division 1 South Central, which is one of the regional first divisions. It's at least one tier above us. So it's no shame losing against them. And uh, I mean, if I'd have realised they were the league above before the second leg, I might have shown you the, not the second leg, before the replay, I might have shown you the first match, but seemed a bit silly to show you the replay when I'd already gone past the first match, not realising they were from the division above. I figured it out when we went 3-0 down in the game. It seems to be a little bit of a theme for us this season that we fall behind early on. You saw it in the first match, of the first couple of matches of the season. We fall behind, then we rescue ourselves late on. I would like to be able to just win football matches without falling behind for First, but we haven't quite mastered that yet. The one league game that we've lost is against Risborough Rangers. Risborough Rangers are top of the league. We're second. So we're doing quite well. Edgeware and, King Edgeware and Kingsbury, who we played today, are down in sixth. Rainers Lane in eighth. But remember, Rainers Lane, huge odds on favourites to win the league. So... I would expect them to start to come good as the season goes on. But first up, it is our triple threat match. And this is the team that we're going to be putting out there for it. A team, by the way, that is now within budget because we've sent a couple of our a couple more of our young players out on loans where their salaries are being covered. And um, we did bring one more loan in, Kieran Chatting, who looks like a great left back but got injured on his debut. So we've not actually seen anything of him yet. But yeah, we are... Uh, we are within budget. Still absolutely hemorrhaging money, but we're within budget. And that's all I can do as first team manager. So this is the team. Dylan in goal. A back for of Cornish, Edwards, Haley and Gray. Dougal and Priestley in midfield as Sean Martin still not recovered from that injury that he picked up also on the first day of the season. I think we've had a couple of unfortunate injury situations so far this year. Russ Eddy keeps his spot in midfield as he has all year. Russ Eddy at 16 years old, has been brilliant. A career career stats as a 16-year-old. Seven starts, three goals, two assists, a 7.19 average rating. He's uh, he's a revelation, Russ Eddy, in that position. So Russ Eddy plays alongside Stefanishin, and then up front, it's Ward and McNichol. McNichol, by the way, already much better than he was last year in Northern Ireland. Only got one goal all year in all competitions this season. Six goals from six, six starts. So Ryan McNichol scoring goals for us as well, which is very nice to see. So let's get our uh, let's get our team submitted and hopefully get out there and pick up three points against a team that I mean they've had a decent start to the season, not quite as good as ours, but they're not. They're not very far behind. One point behind us going in. So it's it's a bit of an early season, top of the table-ish clash. I know Risborough obviously are top of the table and have beaten us. But Edgware are right up there with us. So if we are serious about being in a promotion battle, and remember, we have to be serious. The board have said we've got to get into the playoffs. I don't think we'll get away with failing our objectives two years in a row. So we do need to be, at the very least, getting into the players, not necessarily even winning them, just finishing in those top five positions this year. These are the kind of teams in home matches that we need to be beating. So fingers crossed, that's exactly what we're about to do. This is some lovely football, and it ends up with Cornish, the six foot four centre-back at left-back, drives it across, it bobbles down to Russ Eddy, and, I mean, the man is absurd. Can we even call him a man? The boy is absurd. This is... He has no right to be as good as he is in the match engine because if you look at him, he shouldn't be. Shall we look at him? I think we'll look at him. Um, if you look at his attributes, I mean, I'm not an attribute guy, but 
I don't know what we're seeing there that's particularly special. I'm sure you'll tell me down in the comment section. I mean, it's lots of complementary attributes, I guess. First touch, technique, flair. Having the combination of those is probably quite handy. Decent vision for this level as well. So I guess... He has got some decent complementary statistics. But if we look at the star rating, which we all know is the real is the real identifier of if a player is good or not, he should be our sixth best attacking midfielder. I would suggest he's better than our sixth best attacking midfielder based on form. It's another goal for Russ Eddy. The man loves a goal contribution, whether he's scoring them or setting them up. And he's got an opportunity to score another one here. It's Russ Eddy from the free kick, from the edge of the area. I mean, when you lock into a player like this, it's quite handy in a save of this kind. <laughs> because, I mean, we haven't been able to sign a player of this quality at any point. But to have one just pop up in our youth team is uh, it's quite handy, really, isn't it? I think Russ Eddy setting himself up to be an absolute star of the save already. Even if this end, even if by the time he's 18, he's done, he's washed up and finished because maybe we get promoted and he can't keep up with us. Just, just knowing what he did as a youngster, he'll be the Michael Owen of Wembley forever. Wembley probably already has a Michael Owen. I, I I would argue he's most famous for his England performance. Yeah, we we need the, the new Mick Powell. Mate, uh, that that's a lot of pressure. That's that's much more pressure than calling him uh, Wembley's Michael Owen. I think it, yeah, you can't live up to being the new Mick Powell. That's not possible. Um, but maybe an early front runner for first knighthood of the series. I mean, he's not going to get a knighthood at sixteen years old. That's ridiculous. But if he's still with us in the national league at twenty five and still a key player for us. I think it's a very good chance for that boy. But 2-0, two, two goals from Rossetti. It's been a great performance from him so far. Uh, I mean, it's been a good performance from us as a team. We're playing against one of the better teams in the division, remember? And we're relatively comfortable. This is what we weren't really doing last season. We were so erratic and inconsistent. Whereas this year, we do seem less so he says, as we concede. I mean, you've just got to accept it. clean sheets are very rare at this level. Dylan definitely should be doing better. But I think I'm resigned to the fact that at this level, we're not going to find a goalkeeper who will do better in that situation. It's effectively straight at him. <laughs> but he's just kind of opened his hands and let it through like the silly goose that he is. And we just got to hope that we can outscore the other teams. I mean, to be fair... Looking at the match stats, Russ, if you take Russ Eddy out of the equation, Edgeware have been the better team today. They have they are dominating every stat. They've doubled our XG, more than doubled our shots, doubled our shots on target. They are going to be feeling very hard done by that they're still losing this match. So if they were to grab another one, it would be very fair in the context of how the match has gone. But you could argue that if we... Uh, if we were still chasing goals, we'd be playing a little bit more ambitiously. So maybe... You know, you can you can never fully judge it on this because we're we're adjusting how we're playing thanks to the performance of Russ Eddy. Um, but they've got another chance here that didn't go wide by very much, and Dylan absolutely was not aware that it was happening. Well, anyone who watches my Twitch streams will know my thoughts on Dylan's in general. I should have I didn't even think of it when I signed him. Uh, and my th my theory over Dylan's and it's more the first name Dylan rather than the surname Dylan. I've not had too many run-ins with with surname Dylan's, but as a former teacher, first name Dylan always naughty. Never never met a Dylan who wasn't a rascal. If you're a Dylan in the comments section, let me know. I mean, I'm not even asking it as a question. If you're a Dylan, just confirm in the comments you are indeed a rascal, because it's it's basically it's never it's never been proven wrong, and I am starting to worry that it does apply to surnames as well. And I've inadvertently introduced a rascal to our defence, and that's the last thing you need, especially in goal. We're in tier nine. Tier nine goalkeepers are a nightmare as it is. The last thing you want is one of them to be a rascal. I never learn. Right, it's still 2-1. We're into the final five minutes. We could do with a third goal here. Ward is trying to generate one. It's back out to Gray. Kieran trying to slide it across. That's, again, never never seen a never seen a Kieran who wasn't a naughty boy either. There's certain names, isn't there? We're not gonna get into it. If the, if this is the kind of content you're here for, twitch.tv slash Lelujo.
I stream several nights a week. That's the kind of thing we talk about. Highlights on the Lujo 2. What a promo for the Twitch channel that was. Goodness me. Right, can we uh, can we not concede a last minute goal? Oh my word. Still 2-1. Just cling on to this now, boys. We've got a big game against Rainers Lane coming up. We could do with going in there with a bit of confidence, and that's exactly what we are going to do. And not for the first time this season, we have a 16-year-old with two first names to thank. Russ Eddy, you are a hero. Right, I know what you're thinking. Kev, we only looked at the uh, Rainers Lane Stadium an episode or two back because we played Broadfield, Broadfields United. They play at the same ground. And I get it. We have seen it from the front but i've been doing some exploring and i've discovered the secret back entrance now remember this is all shiny beautiful new build fanciness around the front look at this beautiful stuff i think i threatened to buy a house there but if we go around the back where we've got the secret way in I mean, they're still nice houses. Just, I, I like a new house. They're not actually they're not actually as bad as I remember them being. This is fine. Clear up some of these leaves, though. Very scruffy. But if we spin around, we can see in. We can see over the fence. I wonder, I mean, do they open this gate on match day to let people out? But we can have a proper look at the, uh, at the sports car. I wish we could go higher. Google Maps needs a drone. But that is the pitch. So that's the, uh, that's the sports club facility. There's the benches that you can sit on and watch. I think we've got the dugouts there as well, haven't we? And that is the pitch. I mean, there's nothing in the way of a grandstand or any terracing or anything like that. It is very much what appears to be a 3G pitch or some kind of artificial pitch surrounded by a fence on all sides. But, I mean, it's a nice, shiny, polished new facility. I've certainly seen worse. Decent pitch. Very flat for this level. Rainers Lane, everybody. Which road? Is, I, I mean, is one of these roads called Rainers Lane? Oh, that road is Rainers Lane. That's probably what they're named after. Look, Rainers Lane is there and it goes around here as well. They could have been called Clitheroe Avenue in another universe. Maybe there is a Clitheroe Avenue football team. And I just am not familiar with them. So the team for the big away game against Rainers Lane, it's not changed massively from the one that we've just seen. What we are going to do actually is just put a... Uh, another outfield player on the bench who needs a goalkeeper on the bench and um, we've brought Haley. Uh, sorry Harris has come into the back four Haley's moved out to right back and uh, we've also brought Worry for his experience and Terry back into the midfield and Sant back in in an attacking midfield I would consider those three certainly my regular nailed on starters Haley a little bit more defensively solid than Gray against a team that we've been told to go very defensive against seemed to make a little bit of sense as well although it does mean we're effectively playing four centre-backs again although to be fair if it's good enough for Pep Guardiola it's good enough for me although I would I would probably add to that I don't think Pep Guardiola then tells two of them to play his flying wing backs and give him all of his width but you know I'm taking what Guardiola's done and elevating it to another level that's what the great managers do we learn from the best and then go even better and that's what we're doing here on this channel the tagline for the channel Lelujo a little bit better than Pep Guardiola. That mer that merch will be coming just as soon as he signs off on his image rights, which we are still waiting on. Uh, right, it's still nil-nil, 23 minutes gone, so about halfway through this first half, and it is the first attack of the game, and that is a very fortuitous goal from yet another man with no surname, Josh Thomas, scoring for Rainers Lane. He's absolutely wellied it. I mean, I've said it's fortuitous. If you kick the ball that hard, you deserve a little bit of fortune. But he's absolutely smashed it, and it's taken a big deflection there, which takes it past Dylan, and then the underside of the bar. All goals that go in off the underside of the bar look fancier than they are, don't they? It's just, a, if you want to make a goal look good, in off the underside of the bar just makes it that bit more exciting. Um, we're going to offer some encouragement to the boys. I'm not going to demand more. We're away from home against supposedly, comfortably, the best team in the league. So we're not expected to come here and win. It would be quite nice if we could drag ourselves back into it and maybe avoid defeat. But at the end of the day, we're a playoff team. They're strong title favourites. If, uh, if we come here and lose 1-0 and put up a good fight, 
that's not anything to be massively upset about, I don't think, even though we've been on a decent run of form. Uh, right, Edwards, looking for options ahead of him. He is a centre-back. Just kick it far. He gives it to Worry, who also doesn't really seem to know what to do with it. And now Harris to Sant. Sant is someone who can be a bit more creative, and he plays it out to Haley, who's normally a centre-back, and can apparently play really well as a right back. And Sant is in, and that is a lovely equaliser. Jamie Sant starts it off with that little bit of composure in midfield to play it out to Haley. But that's really good work from Haley when you consider that he is a centre-back playing at right back who's been brought into the team today for his defensive qualities. Has shown that, he, I mean, that's a lovely through ball. Defence splitting, that pass was. Lovely work. Their goalkeeper's called Bort. What a great name. That is a, that's a genuinely great name. I want a goalkeeper called Bort. I wonder if he's for sale. Right, 1-1 one, one at half-time. We'll take this. This leaves us three points behind Risborough at the top of the league. And importantly, still above Rainers Lane, who, I mean, surely, based on how strong a favourites they are to get promoted this year, their manager must be in danger of getting sacked if they don't get a result today, you would think. If we could come here and beat them, I'd sack the manager off the back of that, especially how poor, how poor we were last year. Right, Sant trying to get another attack going here. Plays it to Haley again. I mean, it worked first time around. Let's see if we can repeat the trick. Haley gives it or tries to give it back to Sant this time. Um, it's not quite such a good pass. Maybe the first one was a fluke. He kind of mishit it and it bobbled through the defence. That's why it confused the defence so much because nobody was expecting it to end up where it did especially Hayley. Um, but Sant, showing he can do some defensive work as well, although because it's football manager, he puts the tackle in and it immediately goes back to the opposition. And now Russ Eddy, who has been very quiet today. I mean, I sang Russ, Russ Eddy's praises a lot in that first match. This has been his first really quiet, anonymous game that he's had in a Wembley shirt. So I don't know if he's maybe overawed by the occasion of playing against a good team or if we're maybe just overusing him as a 16-year-old because this is we're only three days removed from Saturday. So I've always been a little bit reluctant to play really young players every game, especially when the games are really close together. So maybe Russ Eddy just needs rotating out of the team for a game or two. We've obviously got Dom Pierce still knocking around the place who hasn't had a look in for a little while um, because Eddie's kind of taken his spot. So maybe, maybe it's time to rest him. Um, we'll bring Stefanisson on for him today. Because we've got lot, we've got lots of players who can play in that role. So there's no reason to force him to play every match and risk breaking him. So let's... Uh, Let's give him 20 minutes of rest. Let's see if between Balogun and Stefanishin, they can uh, they can grab us a winner or at the very least help us avoid conceding a, a loser. Is that what you call it when you concede a late goal? A loser? I've never heard it referred to as that, but if a winner's a winner, a loser's a loser, surely. That's just good logic. Uh, still 1-1. One, one. Final 10 minutes. Have we got a game changer on the bench? Not really. We've, we've got a right back, a left back, and a defensive midfielder. Sorry, a right back, an injured left back, and a defensive midfielder. I don't know that any of these are coming on to change the game, but William Worry is an old man nearly as old as me in real life, who can't play 90 minutes. I mean, we've brought him in for his leadership. He is doing good work with that, but we can't play him twice a week and he rarely does a full 90. So we do have to manage his game time just as much as we have to manage the 16-year-olds. Priestley plays it forward to Cornish and now Stefanish, and who did come on to change the game. He hasn't changed it yet, but maybe this is his opportunity. Terry, back to uh, back to Edwards, was that? Uh, I mean, he's not, yeah, it is Edwards. His name didn't show up. Um, Edwards forward to Priestley and now Balogun who's dropped deep and given the ball away which is a little bit of a shame um, Haley though already made one goal today can he make another one it's another good pass from Haley. Balogun is covering some ground as well at centre forward crosses to Ward who can't keep his header down and that was a good opportunity but unfortunately not able to uh, keep that header below the crossbar we have played very well say so similar to how Edgware came to our place and kind of outplayed us we've come to Rainers Lane and kind of outplayed him it didn't do Edgware any good and it might be about to uh, cause us problems as well. Maybe the rule in this league is worst team wins. It's like golf scoring. It doesn't make any sense. Um, but they are on the attack here. That is offside. That is surely offside. Linesman's got his flag up. I think that's being disallowed and it has been disallowed. <sighs> that, was, that was a moment of panic. They've got a ball and a bub. Bub's having a terrible game. They've got some good names at Rainers Lane. I like it. One, one uh, we'll take that. We take that every single time. 
I did not expect to come out of this episode with four points. I'm delighted with that. And the league position is delicious. We're third in the league. The board have got absolutely nothing to complain about. Apparently, getting knocked out in the preliminary round of the FA Cup is being competitive in it. But we're within wage budget. We're on target for the playoffs. Everyone's happy. I'm happy. The one thing we're not doing is repairing the club's financial damage, but I maintain that is well outside of my remit. And I don't understand what's happening here because this continues to increase despite the fact that when I go to the scout priorities, everything's on hold. There is no scouting happening. We, we can't, we've not been able to pay for our scouting package, so we don't have one. So there's no scouting package. No scouting at all is happening. Apart from next opposition. I don't understand where the scouting money is going. I had this in my Twitch save in Turkey earlier in the year. There, there was just a couple of seasons where for some reason we spent like half a million pounds a year on scouting and there was no real explanation for it. And we kind of decided it's probably a bug. And I think, I think this is a bug because I am not doing any scouting. Yet the scouts are spending an absolute fortune. Scouting costs... 26 grand already this season. We only spent 41 grand last season on scouting. This year, already spent 26. There's something going on there, and I don't know what it is, and I don't know how to stop it. But that's that's going to be a problem. If we keep spending six grand a month, that's going to be well over what we spent last season by the end of the year. Do I just take everybody off of this? I mean, if I just remove everyone from here, I guess, then there is nobody to scout, but they're on hold anyway. I don't understand. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.